Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be taking a look at some more aesthetic features of the PC-98. In this case, the video system and how to upgrade it. Now, if you've ever bought a used PC-98, you might be asking yourself, why are there two video ports on the motherboard and why is one an input port and an output port? Or if you have an older PC-98 like this AN, you might be asking yourself, why is there a CRT in port and a CRT out port, or two CRT out ports, and why is it when I plug my video into them, I see nothing, but when I plug my video into here, I get video out? Well, that is what this video is here to talk about, is the PC-98 video system and how to upgrade a video card on a PC-98. Now, the PC-98 was originally designed in 1982, and the video system on it was the only video system you'd ever need. Now, this would be a very fatal flaw for NEC as the PC-98 hardware aged, because the only way the video hardware could be upgraded is if NEC came out with an upgrade to it, and you also had to buy the new machine. And the only way you could even get, say, more colors or better video is if NEC specifically provisioned that PC-98 model for an upgrade, such as what they did with the PC-98 01 VM. The, the PC9801 VM has a VRAM upgrade, apparently, that lets it display more colors. And that was the only way you could actually enhance the PC98's video system is if NEC said so. So otherwise, you'd have to buy a new PC98 if you wanted better video. And NEC did this a few times. There was the GCRG chip that was introduced in the VM. There was the EGC chip introduced in the VX, and all the 286 models had it. And then there was the PEGC that was added in the PC-9821 that allowed 256 colors. So this PC-98 can display 256 colors at 640 by 480 and that's all it can do. It can't do anything else. For comparison, IBM was smart when they designed the PC, and everybody cloned it. Because, let me explain the difference between the PC-98 video system and the PC video system. This. This was the difference between the PC-98 video system and the PC video system. The PC video system was all on a card. And you could take that card out and put a newer card in when a newer card came out. So, for example, this is the Tissing ET4000. This is a very famous... Uh, PC video card that I pulled out of a scrap pile. As you can see by the pin being bent there a little. I'd have to look closely at the pins to make sure there's nothing shortened or anything if I wanted to use this. Or if the scratches aren't too bad or anything. But this is a Tissing ET4000, a very popular video card from back in the day. And on a PC, this was designed to be upgradable. If you wanted to upgrade a PC, all you had to do is pop open the cover and boom your video card would be there. It would be the support on the back, and you could just pop it in and upgrade. It was that simple. Now, for comparison, on a normal PC-compatible or PC, it's very easy to upgrade the video card inside the machine. All you have to do is first pop the back of the case off, and the second thing you got to do is you see this card right here? You just got to pull that out, and as you can see, it's got the VGA port on it. You just have to pull that card out, and boom, you've got yourself an upgraded video card. It's literally that simple. And that's because the video hardware is on this card and not on the motherboard. This was possible because not only was the video system designed to be modular so you could switch between something like CGA, EGA, MGA, Hercules, and all the other standards before VGA came out. But also, the PC used option ROMs on these video cards. The PC-98 did for SCSI, but for video cards, it didn't have such a thing because all you were supposed to do was use the video on board. So, on the PC, it would load the option ROM for video and you would get video out. You couldn't do this on a PC-98, because on the PC-98, the video card is directly integrated into the hardware. There is no way 
to upgrade the video card? Or is there? Because some companies came up with a clever workaround for this design flaw. And I'm going to show you what they did. So this company called IO Data had a problem. There were these CAD software companies coming up to them and saying, hey, we want to be able to display high resolution for CAD software on a PC98, but the best it can do is 640 by 400. How can we get higher resolutions to make our CAD programs work? And so IO Data went and they designed their own in-house GPU, the GA1024, and what they did was a very clever workaround that every PC98 video card upgrade would do. And let me explain how they did this. So on a PC98, you can't upgrade the video hardware because it is always on the motherboard. There's no exceptions to that. Every PC98 has the video system tightly integrated. What IO Data did was something that would be done years later with the 3DFX Voodoo and pretty much every PC98 video card upgrade. They just bypassed it. And this is what even new PC98s do with the S3, the Surus, the Trident chips. They just completely bypass the video chip on the motherboard when those cards are engaged. And software-wise, they show up as the same. They show up as additional video cards. So that whole Reddit post that claims that if you have a Surus or Trident games might not work. That post is baloney, and the truth is that's because some later PC98s removed old video modes from the onboard video hardware. So let's take a look at this. This is a later PC98 video card upgrade for this machine in particular, and this is an older PC98 video upgrade for most PC98s. This ha is a CBUS card with a Surus Logic. GD5428, a very popular um, video card back in the day on the PC world. But on the PC98, they did a few clever things. And what they did was, you see these two red things? These are relays. And what happens is, when the video card loads its driver, the relays will actually click over and switch this video out port to display the Surus chip. And that's why there's a video import, so you can still see the BIOS output and play your old PC98 game, play your old PC98 games and do all that fun stuff. And that is why those two ports exist. The same goes with this. This is an S3, uh, 86C928 or the S3928, and this was also a popular PC video card back in the day. Same thing here, an Omron relay which will click over when the video card is engaged. This is actually specific to the PC-98, um, 9821A series, or A-Mates as they're called, or 98Mate A. There's different names for this platform, but all of them can take this video card. And what they did here on this model is they used a variant of Visa Local Bus. They just called it Local Bus, because it's different from Visa Local Bus and has a different connector, that's basically, they designed it so that if you have this card, it'll bypass the C bus connector, and it will plug right into that special upgrade port, which is only on ports 3 and 4 on this machine. And once you do that, then you have to install the drivers or use DOS software aware of the cards, and it will click over, and you will get video out from this card. It was a very clever workaround designed to work around NEC's design flaw where they could only upgrade the video cards, you know, with stuff that NEC provisioned. And if they didn't provision it, you were stuck. So that is what they did to work around NEC's critical flaw. And to make matters worse, you know, if you had a PC-98 and the official way to get high-res video was to buy a high-res PC-98 like this one below. But if you didn't want to do that, you could just simply, you know, go buy this video card. And this is what pretty much everybody did back in the day. They would buy one of these video cards, they would slap it in, and they would get better video in Windows and games that supported it. Because some DOS games like Doom and Atlas Soft games did support specific video card upgrade options 
So you could get 256 colors out of a PC-98 that didn't do 256 by just plugging here into here. Now, there was also a nickname for these video cards, or an official name for them. They were called window accelerators because they would speed up windows. That was the idea. In fact, this card even says on there that it's a window accelerator straight up. That's what they call them in the PC-98 world. They called these window accelerators because they were designed to make windows faster. I mean, I'm sure that they initially called them graphics accelerators, given that the one card is called the GA1024, but they would just call them window accelerators later on. And this was the cable you used to hook up some of them. I say some of them because not all PC-98 or not all PC-98 cards use that same connector. Some of them, like this one, use a proprietary special connector. And it's different based on each company. They use different pinouts because they could. And this is how you would upgrade it and hook it in. So what you do, if you had a card that used a normal connector, is you would get a 15-pin extension cord for extending like the video output of these or old Macs or MIDI on old PCs. And you would take... This, you plug into analog RGB. Actually, you know it's the other one. You plug into analog RGB. And then you plug the other into CRT in. And you tighten the screws. And kaboom. You've now upgraded the video system on your PC-98 for more colors. As this PC-98 can only do... Um, 256 colors at 640 by 480 with windows but when you pop this in you can do a lot more colors and i'm going to demonstrate this now once i hook this pc98 up on this very messy tench bench that i'm going to declutter real soon okay we've got our pc98 hooked up let's turn it on with this video setup on so as you can see we still get video output from our PC-98 side, at least. And it's doing the memory test, it's doing its post, it's doing all that fun stuff, and because we've got 128 megs, it takes a little while for the post to complete. Now, I should also tell you that this is a Ytech Power 9000, not even a 9100, it's a Ytech Power 9000, kind of a popular card back in the day, Kind of old, kind of slow in some ways. And it's currently doing its post. It's doing the usual PC-98 stuff. So it's clearing post. And then it's loading the option ROM for a SCSI adapter. And because there's nothing hooked up, it's just going to find nothing. I should really change a setting so the transfer mode's DMA or something. I need to get to that. And so Windows 98 is booting. I don't know why I put 98 on here. I think it was trying to debug something. But Windows 98 on this computer with this old uh, IDE controller with this old 90 megahertz CPU is not very fast at all. It leaves a lot to be desired. So it's taking its time to boot. And it's, that was the click. That was the click. If you heard that, I don't know if you heard that, but we are now in Windows. This, this pot's messed up. The reset switch is too. But I mean, I can't complain because I recapped it as best as I could. As you can see, it's pretty slow. But, we've got high color at 1024 by 768. We can get higher rest if we change it to 256 colors. And, if we change the rest lower, we can get 32-bit colors. And, it mostly works. I say mostly because there's little video corruption like lines here and stuff. But let's load a uh, direct draw game.
and it's a slow CPU, so it's not going to be that fast. I'm going to grab the keyboard here, place it here so I can just push the keys. Sorry that the pot for the volume is messed up, but as you can see, we can play Jazz Jack Rabbit 2, and our video is not dithering if I hit Control Enter. Let me see how to make it full screen. I forget. Let's go to Options. Can't make it full screen. Okay, the, the, that key works. So yeah, I can't make it full screen. And it's in a window. But I can play Jazz Track Rabbit 2 now. I forgot what the controls are. What are the controls in this game? I completely forgot. Shift jump, I, I remember now. Now I can play Jazz Jacker up at 2 on this PC98 with more colors. And the sound's low, sorry about that. But yeah. And let's show you how it works a little bit. So as you can see, there's we've got our WSPL with Ytech listed there, and we've also got our PC9821 video listed there. Now on computers with the video built in, sometimes I'll actually show up as disabled or with an exclamation point, but as you can see, we have all the colors now. And let's open up DOS prompt. Let's hit Alt Enter or Graph Enter. Click. Click. It actually switches the video card back when you go full screen, which is pretty cool. And there you have it. That's how you upgrade a video card on a computer where you're told you're not allowed to upgrade the video card. You just bypass the onboard video. And there you have another weird PC98 quirk. How you upgrade the video hardware.